Uh, to a little uh, first in football, what you call And we start with Joe Burrow. Remember him with the wrist injury and the Bengals? Well, guess what he said about the matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Bengals. He said, quote, we both work really hard at what we do. They've got great players. We've got great players. I think we match up pretty well with them. We're kind of built to beat them. Yeah. Why would Joe Burrow say this about the Super Bowl champs? Because he's 3-1 and one against them, yeah. and he's the only guy that's had any type of continued success against the Chiefs, and he has every right to say it, uh, and he's dead on right. You know, they, don't forget, they were renaming Arrowhead. Burrowhead. Burrowhead, if you remember, uh, prior to the last time they matched up. And there was some truth to that, where, you know, the one bugaboo for Patrick Mahomes in a career where he has no bugaboos was his inability uh, to get past the Cincinnati Bengals, right? Cincinnati is the only team that's gone into Arrowhead and had great success in the postseason like they have. Now, look, Cincinnati's got other problems right now, and that is their own division and the fact that they have taken a hit talent-wise where they may not be as good running the ball. They don't have the depth they had at wide receiver. All the things that come with success, you know, and losing players because of financial concerns. Don't get it twisted, though. If Joe Burrow is healthy and he's had two years where he has been healthy and two years where he hasn't been healthy mm -hmm. throughout the year, the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals are as good as any team in football. They're a legitimate Super Bowl contender, uh, and they're the team that if they did match up head-to-head -head against Kansas City, you don't just blindly pick Kansas City because Cincinnati is not afraid of them. Like, it's almost like the boogeyman. Right, like, oh, you hear about the boogeyman, so you're afraid of the boogeyman. He once <laughs> killed a man with a pencil. Uh, all right, John Wick, thank John you very Wick. much. Uh, but if you've seen the boogeyman, uh, it's like the Wizard of Oz. If, if you don't see him, you're afraid of him. Once you see him and you beat him, you're not that afraid of him. And that's kind of what Cincinnati is to Kansas City. Yeah, what frustra frustrates me about this comment is I wish Joe Burrow would look in his own division because there's a lot of boogeymen right? in his very yeah. own he division. He could come in last place. No question. So you're talking about Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, obviously uh, Deshaun Watson. Like all teams on, on that division, it's a black and blue division. So as much as I love Joe Burrow, I'm looking at a guy who's injury prone. He says they've taken a regression from the receiving court. The defense is not the same. So as much as he looks at Patrick Mahomes like that's the guy on top of the mountain, he may not be able to get out of his own house. And that's the other thing. Like, we're worried about Kansas City when yeah. the reality is that you've you've got you know three other teams in your division that could lay claim to being division champs yeah. this year. And I think I've been thinking about this a lot because we talk about that division so much because it is the deepest division of football. I don't think anyone really argue sure. that on both because, sides of the ball because you got Absolutely. four great quarterbacks and three great defenses and one really good defense, in my opinion. But you know the reality is this: if I told you right now, just today, whichever quarterback plays the most games. That's the team that wins the division. Would that be a fair thing to say? Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. Because none of them typically get through so an entire season. So you give me, whether it's the Ravens, the Browns, obviously the Steelers or the Bengals, whichever one of their starting quarterbacks plays the most games, starts the most games, I would say right now today, and this doesn't seem like a crazy thing to say, that would be my favorite to win the division. I don't think it's crazy, but I think there's two teams that have proven they can win without their starting quarterback, and that's the Steelers and Browns. I think the only team that's up for grabs right now, if they could adjust, is probably Baltimore, right? Because Baltimore, Lamar has been healthy. He's been solid for the most part. Overall, I think what, what, what scares you about this division, especially Joe Burrow, is that – Everybody in this division has a defense. They lost D.J. Reader. D.J. Reader was their top guy. Now he's over in Detroit. So if Joe Burrow's not in the lineup and you lose your top defensive guy, who are the Cincinnati Bengals? And I think that's what Joe's regret, not even looking at right now. Yep. They need more pieces to do. Well, I think the belief is still going to be we have a franchise quarterback should make everybody around him better. Windows always open, Craig. <laughs> no, it's Windows not. always <laughs> open, Craig. That window closed uh, when you couldn't get the job done against Kansas City. And then your general manager gutted the roster from anyone uh, that was all that talented beyond. I, you and Josh say, Allen. I was a little concerned when you started naming players and yeah. you couldn't think of a fourth one. Well, yeah. not, <laughs> not that guy. Yeah. Me. He's like me oh, and, and uh, Josh. Also, and, and just here. Did yeah. you also get the sense that he was just coming up with popular first names? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you and, know, yeah. any team with Mike and, Mike, and John and Steve, Steve yeah, 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 and Gary, Bill. Yeah. You know, he didn't say last names because he didn't know anybody <laughs> know. on the team. The other, thing, the other thing he said is the window's open because we play with heart. Yeah, okay. Right. That, listen, that ain't going to get you anywhere. I just asked the Tin Man. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, look, I that say this, boss, right? I'll say it repeatedly. You have a great quarterback, not a good quarterback. You're going to win a couple games because you have a great quarterback. But if you couldn't get the job done when you had a lot of great talent around Josh Allen and the defense was also pretty damn good, mm -hmm. remember three years ago 
when they acquired Von Miller. And we were like, that's the missing piece. Now the Bills are going to get over the hump. And, of course, no. he got hurt and then had off-the-field issues as well, self-inflicted. And you kind of came on late not this really. past year, but not where they not expected really. him to be. Look, it's a wrap. You know, if you told me the Bills are alive for a wild card spot come Thanksgiving or December 1, I think that's a major win for them. They are not the best team in the division anymore. They don't have the best quarterback in the division because Aaron Rodgers, uh, healthy coming in for the New York Jets, would be. And if you couldn't get the job done when you had talent there, how in the world are you going to get the job done now? But, Craig, pivot back to what you said last week. What did the Bills get for Stephon Dix? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, right? Like, uh, second round pick next year. Right. And pivot back. Like when the Chiefs lost Tyreek Hill, they got five draft picks, so they were able to build up and they got that within the draft. Even when Green Bay lost Devontae Adams, they were able to get uh, uh, more draft picks, right. so they were able to build up. You're talking about the Buffalo Bills have nothing right now for that receiver court. Gabe right. Davis is down in Jacksonville, so if you're Josh Allen, yeah, I'm him, but who am I throwing the ball to? Right, that's right, exactly right. You got Shakir, and he's a slot receiver. He's not a, he's not right. a game breaking, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to diminish what he brings to a team, but a guy like that's only good when you got outside threats no that a defense has to pay attention to, which opens up that slot. Uh, look, the Buffalo Bills, and I told you this a year ago, this was going to be a very, very tough year for them because of their cap situation, yeah. and I've said it for over a year now. Sean McDermott's going to be the scapegoat for it this year, and this will be his last year as head coach of the Bills. You know, barring a great run. Obviously, all you got to do is win to keep your job. But I did say this a year ago, that 2024 was going to be a down year for the Bills because of their cap situation. And I believe they're making Sean McDermott the scapegoat for it. Moving on, staying in the AFC East. Now, let's take a look at the Jets quarterback. Here's oh. Aaron Rodgers working out with USC college students. That's right. Look at that picture oh. on the right, Craig. That's, a, that's called the thirst trap. Is that encouraging or concerning about your quarterback? Look at this man. That looks like uh, that's John, a John Holmes porno is what it looks like Craig. to me. No, oh, that's called yeah. withdrawal. When you no. go through withdrawal, let me, let that's the face you Let me tell you what that <laughs> is. That's a 40-year-old quarterback who'll have a torn Achilles who's busting his ass to get back on a football field. <laughs> you don't field. see athletes That's the guy who spent two months in Iowa and him burnt out. You guys can mock it all you want. I don't remember seeing him like this. Oh, God. His hands on his hips. That guy was running mountains is what that <laughs> guy was doing. <laughs> really? That guy was running with 20-year-old kids at USC, and he finished the race with those Great. kids. That, now, that I'll was tell a you war what, he's he looks warm. Old. That's not warm up for Willie Cologne. He looks he's old. got the compression socks on. The man was out there running hills with dudes young enough to be his kid. And I tell you the thing, the only thing that bothered me, because I I'll be I'm not just, you know, the, the grass is always green when I talk about Aaron Rodgers. The only thing that bothered me, if you put that the first picture back up on the screen, is it looked like man boobs. That's the only thing that bothered no. me. Now. Oh no. I, now, that could be a bad angle of the camera, it could yeah. be the wind, yeah. but uh, I've this, experienced that once in my life. Me, Craig, this doesn't bother you? No. You know why? Let me walk you through. Because you guys were nose because y'all don't exercise anymore. Oh, that's uh -huh. it. Yeah, but yeah. when you're running up the mountain ah, and it's yeah. arduous yeah. and it's yeah. tough yeah. and you're coming over torn Achilles, when you break through whatever that imaginary finish line is that the kids of USC are breezing through and you finally make it, you're like, oh, no. yeah. No. You, like, that's that's a guy that just accomplished the goal. Yo, you what make about, that face when you hate your life at the moment. Like, there's clearly he wants nothing knee. to do with that. Look at him I holding his knee. I look, I see that. To me, that's nothing but encouraging for me as a Jet fan. A, that my dude's out there. Because yeah. you know what that means? That means the vice presidential run is over. That means the ayahuasca is over. Hiding out in dark places is over. That's a dude in what? Mid-April. Mid-April. Who's getting ready for football in September? You can't knock it look with that him. Guy, that's look the guy that that's looking for a cigarette and a Coke. That's, that's the way he looks right now. That's how I looked when I left the Bunny like, Ranch back in 96. He's like, give, give me a cigarette. Yeah, he's holding yeah. his knee, Craig. He's Listen, holding his knee sitting on a curb. That's not holding a he's knee. He's sitting on a curb. That's called resting your hand. That's all that is. Yeah. Holy a knee. When does your hand be uh, Listen. Yeah. Yes. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys can mock it and knock it all you want. Yeah, I'll tell you what. When we saw Jalen Hurts working out with Saquon, you guys loved it. When we saw Russell Wilson doing those weird eagles. But you saw eagles, how quick they looked. Right? Yeah. We loved it. So we didn't see one that. pitch of like, ah, so oh, yeah. like, ah. I tell you what, here's the difference. Because guys that, like that, there's vanity off the charts. My guy's not vanity. Vanity. My guy's, like, my guy's like, look, you want to take a picture of me 
uh, making a tough face or yo, who wind it after a long run? Take it. I'm not vain. This man wore designer jeans to match his walking boot to MetLife every Sunday. Guy's you want to talk about style. vanity? Dude's got style. Please. But when Russell Wilson is doing some kind of fugazi kegels, you guys are like, oh, shows you he's all in for the season. It's for the core. Whatever it's it for is. The core. The core. So my guy does the same thing, and all of a sudden it's a problem. Your guy, look, he just finished that. He just finished a buffet. He was exhausted. <laughs> Be consistent. Right. If we're going to applaud other quarterbacks for the offseason workouts, and then let's applaud my quarterback, because I'll tell you what, my guy's more accomplished than your guy. Show the guy working out. Well, we got it at the end of the world. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.